Today we are going to start a new chapter, the third chapter of the second book, and that is about the drainage system of our country. We have discussed about the location of our country in the first chapter. We have discussed about the physiographic conditions of our country in the second chapter. Now in this third chapter, we are going to talk about the drainage system of our country. Why this term drainage has been used? We understand the meaning of the drains. So what we are going to study in this chapter, the drainage system. We are going to study about the rivers that flow in our country. We have studied about the physiography. We, have, we know which regions are, are at higher altitudes and uh, uh, from there whatever rainfall takes place that uh, moves towards the lower regions and ultimately it uh, systematically get drains into the oceans or the bigger larger water bodies. So we see that the rivers work like the drains on the land surface. If the rivers would not have been there, it would have led to water logging. So the land which is fed for human habitation and uh, for uh, for agriculture or various economic activities that would not have been available for human beings because the land would have been uh, have been in a condition where water logging would have been in such a way that uh, human activities would have become very difficult to be followed. And this work of draining the water systematically from the land surface to the lower regions that is done by the rivers. So in this chapter we are going to study about the rivers and that is why the name of the chapter has been given as the drainage system of our country. There are many uh, terms before starting discussing about the rivers of our country, we need to talk about many terms which you should know. You all understand what the source and the mouth of the river means. The source of the river is the place from where the river originates. Whereas the mouth of the river is that place where the river ends, where the river drains its water in bigger water bodies, might be big lakes, might be rivers, bigger rivers, might be oceans or sea. So the where the river ends, that is called the mouth. And where it originates, that is called the source of the river. Since we are talking about the drainage system in our country, we should also understand what does drainage actually means. The flow of water through well-defined channels on the land surface is called drainage. And there is also a term called drainage system. So on the land surface there is a network of rivers, bigger and smaller rivers. The smaller rivers which join the bigger rivers we call it tributaries of the bigger rivers. And uh, there is a network of rivers on the land surface. There is a main river, the trunk river, and uh, there are many smaller rivers which uh, come and join the main river. So it uh, develops into a web of rivers on the land surface. And this uh, network of channels, river channels, is called drainage system. So I hope you understand what does, what does drainage means. What does drainage system means? Besides, there is a term called drainage basin. There is a term called catchment area that you should understand what actually it means. The catchment area is the area from where the river gets its water. The rainfall may take place over a large area and ultimately the water flows into the river and uh, the river systematically carries it to the bigger water bodies and finally it is drained into the oceans and the seas. So the area or the region from where the river gets its water that is called the catchment area. Now there is also a term called drainage basin. Now every river have a drainage basin. It is similar to the catchment area. The drainage basin of a particular river is that area from where it gets its water. 
that is the catchment area of that river is also called the drainage basin besides uh, there are certain other terms like watershed rivers you all understand what rivers are rivulets rills also so first of all what does watershed means what is watershed watershed actually is the uplifted land surface which separates the flow of two rivers this we also call water divide so watershed and water divide are the same terms having the same meaning are the terms having the same meaning so the region uplifted region in a particular area which separates the flow of water in different directions that is called watershed and uh, that we also call river divide besides there are terms like rivers rivulets rills you all understand what rivers are these are what are what is a river river is a channel through which whatever water falls as rain on the land surface is systematically drained to bigger water bodies that is called river and it is not that the river from the initial stage are very big in size the ganga river that you see in patna that has got its water from many tributaries and ultimately it had become so big over here because it is moving towards its mouth towards its end in the bay of bengal but where it has originated it is a narrow stream and this type of narrow streams which is the source of origin of the rivers that is called rivulets and much smaller than that you call it rills also so rills and rivulets are very 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 small channels through which the water starts flowing and which that is the beginning of the formation of the rivers ultimately these small river rills and rivulets keep on joining with one another and the volume of water that is flowing in the channel that goes on becoming larger and larger and it takes the shape of a river and so its size starts increasing and with the with the passage of time many smaller rivers starts joining it and uh, its volume of water that flows that becomes bigger and bigger and finally uh, it, it becomes very big in size and ultimately we call smaller rivers big rivers like that we all are living in the ganga river basin the region where we are living that is called the ganga river basin why it is called the ganga river basin i was just talking about a term river basin why it is called a basin ganga river basin because this whole area which we call the ganga river basin whatever rainfall takes place over here that ultimately goes into the river ganga and that is systematically drained out by the river by river ganga into the bay of bengal that is why we call it the ganga river basin whether there are many rivers over here for example you know the gandak river that joins ganga near our city patna the son river which also joins very close to this region these are all separate rivers the yamuna river the the many other tributaries of ganga join at different places and they provide water to the river whatever rainfall may be taking place in those regions where from where the smaller rivers are flowing whether the gandak the son the ghagra many other rivers sarayu all where it has been flowing it is carrying the water from that region and ultimately it comes into the river ganga and finally this water is carried from by river ganga to the bay of bengal so ultimately the whole region is drained by the main river that is the ganga river so we call it the ganga river basin we live in the ganga river basin so what we actually conclude from this that the the that the rivers uh carry the water from that they get from the tributaries and combinedly it is called 
a river basin finally in initially it may be a smaller river basin for example the river basin of river gandak or river ghagra river sohon like many other smaller rivers but ultimately the whole region is drained by river ganga and we call the whole region as the ganga river basin so these are some of the terms that you should understand first of all before uh, discussing about this chapter besides in the initial stage of my discussion i talked about uh, uh, i talked about the drainage patterns drainage systems that is a network of many smaller rivers that is seen in a particular area that is called a drainage system now this drainage system this com this uh, network of rivers might be in different ways they may be joining each other at right angles they may be joining each other at uh, uh, diagonally and uh, uh, when we see the whole region from a higher altitude uh, it appears to be of different shapes so uh, that type different types of patterns get formed on the landscape by the flow of the rivers the way they join the smaller rivers join the bigger rivers or we can say the way the tributaries join the main rivers uh, it leads to formation of a pattern and that we call a drainage pattern there are different types of drainage pattern that is seen but uh, in this chapter we will be discussing about some of the drainage pattern and uh, one of the most common drainage pattern is a dendritic drainage pattern another is radial drainage pattern another is trellis drainage pattern another is centripetal drainage pattern we'll be discussing about all this in, in the coming classes and uh, uh, whatever problems will be there we'll be discussing about that